Chapter 11 They rode for some time in silence, and Aki was glad of it. Glancing out her window, she glimpsed the Nakara River, dark and swift and threatening. Toward the north were the brooding mountains. She shivered, just looking at them. Half an hour later, they passed the convict city of Krakow, on the one rim road around it. Soon they'd be heading through the heart of the desert toward the Roke. Her excitement communicated to the little dragon curled against her, and it thrummed loudly. "'What's that noise?' demanded Boomer. "'Nothing worrying,' she replied. "'Just the hatchling.' "'I don't trust them lizards,' he repeated, his lips pushed out, which made his face strangely alien. Neither spoke much for the rest of the trip, which was just fine with her. The road between Cacao and the Roke had a numbing sameness to it. On both sides, the desert was a light-colored sandscape, hardly relieved by any greenery. It could have been soporific, but Aki was too keyed up to nap along the way. Besides, she didn't trust Boomer. He might stop at one of the roadside houses, pleading tiredness, then make her get inside. He might try to take the hatchling away, or hurt it somehow. He might— She couldn't begin to imagine all the things Boomer might be capable of doing if she didn't stay awake. Boomer. What a stupid, trog-like name. She shifted uneasily on the seat, resettling the hatchling next to her, curling her arm around its back, enjoying its dozy thrum. She scented a gold-colored chuckle that looked a great deal like reeds waving in a soft wind. Come, big girl, Boomer asked, scratching up under his bandana. Hmm. You can nod off if you want. No, thanks. Her answer didn't encourage any more questions, and for a long time, he didn't ask any. All the way, in fact, to the Roke. When they came at last to the outskirts of the city, Aki sat up straight. As always, the sight of the great walls struck her with awe, in her heart, or her stomach. She wasn't sure which. Stone towers, like dragon wings, stretched out on either side of the main structure. Her usual response to spotting the Roke had been to laugh. This time, she just sighed. Quite a thing, Boomer ventured. Ever seen it afore, I bet. She turned and said sharply, Oh, I've seen it often enough. Even worked here for a while. He nodded, as if understanding. Bad girl. Not! Her voice held contempt that she hadn't meant. After all, her own mother had been a bad girl, had died in a baggery, and Karina, too, had started in a baggery before turning to cooking. Being a bad girl was an honest profession. She rephrased and softened her answer. Not a bad girl. A student doctor. Boomer laughed. Of course. He obviously didn't believe it. And uh, that's a waste. Now that they were inside of the city, Aki suddenly felt a need to set him straight. If he threw her out here, she could walk, even carrying both the satchel and the hatchling, and be there inside of an hour. Of course, you pig! Nothing wasted about me! I was an apprentice doctor, and working with one of the finest research doctors on the planet. Her name is Dr. Hanky. Maybe you've heard of her? He shrugged noncommittally. Aki continued. I'm not one of your pretty girls, Boomer, whatever your real name is. And my father, Master Sarkhan, owned the nursery where you picked me up. So much for remaining anonymous. Immediately, she regretted having said anything at all. He could sell that information. Could pass it on to... to... She had no idea who might want to know, but was suddenly sure she should have remained nameless. In his own way, Golden had told them both that before he left them at the nursery. To her astonishment, Boomer began to laugh full-throated, head back. For a moment, she was afraid they'd go off the road. But it would only mean getting stuck in sand, nothing dangerous. When he'd finally stopped laughing, he slashed the back of his arm across his eyes as if to wipe away tears. Oh, my. It's lucky you didn't have a stinger with you, Aki. I'd be a dead man already, deader than a jack shot out of a tree. The voice was suddenly sweeter, the pronunciation more precise, more familiar, less, less boomer. And he called her Aki, not Akinata. That was when she remembered how he loved disguises. Fake mustaches. Fake scars. Golden? He grinned. She realized that the black tooth was beginning to shred. Golden! He tore off the bandana and the fake hair. Stripped the padded gloves from his hands. Took out the strange lenses from his eyes, which were now the calculating river blue she remembered. Aki, you need to control your urge to give answers where no questions are asked he said, his face now serious. What happened to the girl who managed to infiltrate a rebel cell in disguise? She killed her father and dozens of other people and dragons, lived in a cave for a year with a sweet friend, and barely made it home. That's what happened to her. Well, he drawled, that could change a person, I suppose. 
she exhaled in exasperation. I almost drove off with the truck, you know, when you leaped out to— I was ready for that maneuver and wasn't a bit worried, unless you knew how to turn on an engine without the key. He grinned at her, and despite the black and peeling front tooth, she knew him now. His hands were sweaty from their long stay in the bulky gloves, but they were hardly the meaty, hairy, nail-bitten, filthy things she'd imagined. Golden seemed to think a minute, then added, Though it's a fine skill, hot wiring a car, and I'll teach it to you some day. She slammed her left fist into his arm. Golden, but why? To see if you were ready for this. For this? This adventure, for lack of a better word, this plan of mine. Your plan? It's my plan! He laughed, then suddenly looked serious. What plan? To, to, to... She couldn't tell him, not about the trogs, not about her new abilities. She took a deep breath. To study to be a doctor and a vet. He didn't look entirely convinced. To get him off the scent, she said. But what plan of yours brought you to the nursery? Well, I was going to come get you and Jackin to help me save the Senate. Hadn't actually planned when to do it. Any day now. Then Kay sent me a note with one of the food truckers, saying that you wanted a ride into the Roke. It was a sign, and much too good to pass up. I didn't want her or Lacarn to know it was me, though. Too many questions, too many people knowing my business. Though now I'll have to come back another time to get Jackin. She was totally confused. Save the Senate from... who exactly? From the new ragtag voters, ex-bonders and ex-rebels who haven't a clue as to how the country can be run, or should be run. Who will vote for the one who promises them free Chikar, or a new job, or brings on the bad girls. They want entertainment, not governance. She understood now. You want us to help save your Senate seat? He nodded, grinning. And what do you have in mind for Jack and me to do? He pulled over to the side of the road, stopped the truck, and said with great earnestness, You're to tell them about what the rebels did, their plans, how they fooled you, how they... She was stunned. How about how you put me in danger? How you set in motion the events that made Jackin and me carry a bomb at a rogue major, which killed my father and... He put his hand toward her, but when the dragon hissed, he drew it back. You are our only hope to infiltrate that cell, Aki. They sussed out all our other operatives. We're killing them off one by one. We never thought they'd trust you that soon with a bomb. Fume it, girl. We didn't even know that they actually had bombs. We just wanted to learn their plans. We? Your father, several of the senators, me. Ah, the plot sickens, as my father used to say. He laughed. Dickens or sickens, the plot still needs your help. Suddenly, she was as furious with him as she'd been with Jackin. Maybe more so. Boys in their games. Couldn't you have just flown to the nursery in the copter and asked if Jackin and I wanted to be your mouthpieces? Given us a choice, though who in her right mind would have thought you'd be good at being straightforward and honest? He bristled. I'm a senator, and... Not to be trusted! He laughed. That too, I suppose. Turning his head toward her, he said, Think, Aki. She said slowly. Last time you asked for my help, I was almost killed. And my father was. Part of your peaceful revolution, wasn't it? Think some more, Aki. Now he was looking straight ahead. Damn you, Golden! No more masters, no more slaves, you said, and we believed you. And haven't I delivered? With how many deaths tacked to your door? What's done is over. She could tell he didn't say it lightly. His jawline, even padded by something in his mouth, stiffened as he spoke. But she wouldn't let him off that easily. Putting a hand on the wheel, she said, You did always prefer making a game of things. Well, I'm done with helping you. Dead and dying people and dragons are no game. Next time, ask me in a straightforward manner. No lying, no deceit. Maybe I'll join you, maybe I won't. But you have to promise it will be done in the light, not in the dark. He was no longer smiling. Sticking the bandana back on, rearranging the long black wig, he put the lenses back in his eyes and drove into the city without stopping, and without promising anything.